Welcome to the Cursed Crypt. I am doing this video on request. I had a request to do a solo video for a Cursed Crypt. And just going to do it on Reaper 1 Skull. In fact, I even considered just doing it on Elite, maybe at level 13. You can get the Elite Bravery bonus at level 13. Because uh, I'm doing a Cleric Life. You know, I don't really feel like a powerful solo uh, tune, but I think I can handle Reaper 1 Skull. We'll see. So just like I mentioned in Shadow Crypt, you know, if you're newer to this stuff, uh, this quest is, this is the capstone quest for the Necro 3, or Litany of the Dead Part 3 chain. So you have to do the other four to flag for this. But what some people will do, just like with Shadow Crypt, is they'll have an opener that's always flagged for it, and they never, uh, and then, you know, you just have that person join the party, and then everybody else can enter and then the opener drops. And the opener will be, you know, like a bang tune or mule or whatever that you don't care about that you're not actually going to run the quest with. If you if you know, if you are flagged and you run this, then you need to reflag. Actually, I think with Sh I think Curse Crypt is the exception to that. I think once you flag once, you can keep rerunning, but with Shadow Crypt, uh, once you flag and if you run that flagged tune into Shadow Crypt, then you need to reflag to run it again unless you red box it. So I haven't run Curse Crypt in a while. I've run this many times over the years. I'm not the expert at this quest, so I'm just putting that right out there. Uh, I have run it many times. I don't know that I've run it since Reaper Mode came out though. I think that I may have run it like when right in the very beginning of Reaper. But here's the thing. I don't have an opener for this and Tomb of the Tormented, which is one of the flaggers for this, ever since Champions came out, I, I just want nothing to do with that quest. I mean, it's, it's already slow and aggravating enough. It has good XP. But once re once Champions came out, you know, it just the way that you can have, like, the Champion Wargs and Champion Carcass Eaters down there just tearing up your rats is just really frustrating for me. So you don't even bother. I don't need the XP. I don't need to run Curse Crypt. So, so yeah, I don't, I don't normally run this one. So I'm going to do my best to explain how it works. And I think there's some named loot that comes out of here. I want to look that up real quick. I don't think that it's anything particularly exciting. Oh, we've got the Anthem Ring, or Anathema Ring, which is, that's an interesting ring because it has a hidden effect on it. It's one of the few items in DDO that actually has a hidden effect of adding plus 25% threat generation from spells. Um, there's the Bracer's Bete Noir. I may be mispronouncing that. Not very exciting. Cloak of Curses. Dawson of Defiance. Jinx's Ves Vexation is kind of an interesting um, set of Mithril full plate. I was wearing that on Voodoo for a while. I think that, yeah, that has also a hidden effect of minus three to will save, so that kind of sucks. And then the Scourge Choker actually is kind of a nice item. So yeah, there are some interesting items that come from here. Probably most popularly the Scourge Choker. Alright, let's get to it. Uh, I'll show you where I'm at on the enhancements. So I do have my improved turning all the way, and of course the mighty turning. Nothing else exciting going on. Um, I've got my heal lamp all the way up on the Azimar. You know, this thing is a pain in the butt. You know, I, I talked about it in an earlier episode that, that I thought it was bugged, and it's basically every time you zone, it turns off. It doesn't actually toggle off. It looks like it's on, but you need to toggle it off and back on to get those added hit points. So I walked in with it on. Look at my hit points, 785. I turn it off, still 75. I turn it back on and then they go into effect. So when you zone, the 10% the bonus to hit points, I'm not sure about the saves, I haven't looked at that, but definitely the hit points toggle off, and I believe also when you shrine, and I just noticed that last quest, so I'm not sure about that, but it, that's what appeared to happen is when I shrined it, it turned off, so what a pain in the butt. I'm sure they'll fix that soon. Hopefully they will. I mean, it's a, that's a glaring problem with a capstone feature basically of the new race. So they're gonna wanna fix that. 
Uh, I see I have SLAs of Nimbus of Light and Searing Light. I really want to get that the SLA of um, Holy Smite, but I just don't have enough points yet. And I have Wisdom set up so that when I walk into Reaper Mode, I do have an even number of Wisdom. Okay, this is a time quest, so no more time for dick dancing around. How about we buff? So this quest certainly can be confusing to newer players. You know, it's definitely not obvious what you need to do. There are some objectives and stuff, and they're just, it's just not a linear quest. This part here is, is endless respawns, so you really want to limit the number of times that you're running through this. You're going to have to run through it in, you know, a few times, but you don't want to keep going back and forth unnecessarily. I also got my Kona Cold SLA. I didn't hit too bad on R1. So the other side's blocked off right now. See if I can remember how this works. So we're gonna need a key to get in here and get the spirits that come up and you wanna you definitely wanna approach the door to have those spirits activate because they're gonna help you. They're gonna let you into these sealed rooms in a moment. And they're gonna run off to the sealed rooms, one on each side. I'm just going to let the undead bunch up and so I think some of it might actually white dot but then I'll just turn it in a big pile. The only other thing I have to help my turning besides my three cleric past lives is the Dolorant Seal. It has lesser turning and sacred on it but I don't have silver flame uh, and I'm forgetting what the other thing is off the top of my head but but yeah the Dolorant Seal is the only gear I have right now to help with that elemental fury that's not going to be turned. So we want to kill this gatekeeper, and that's going to open up that door there. So it's just my my two little light SLAs that I'm using to kill these guys right now. Trying to conserve mana. does have a bit of a confusing map because there are like a couple levels, at least two levels, maybe even three. So because, you know, because of that, it's like, it's one of those maps that overlaps itself. So it just makes it confusing when you're newer to it. Dagger not doing too much against him. Heal myself for 178 on R1 with heal scrolls. It's pretty cool. So this quest does have a fail mechanic. It's a very easy to fail this quest. And if you, especially with pugs that don't know it, and they just, you know, most people, they see a mob, they just want to kill it. Well, there are some mobs in here that you don't want to kill. 
and it's the silver flame guys. And be very careful to keep an eye out for those. So there's sort of a little cheat you can do. In my videos, endlessly, I have talked, or many times, <laughs> I talked about, you know, the value of using like the the whatever sh key you use to target non-combat targetables. Uh, and so I use backspace. The default, I believe, is Q and E. And so what we're looking for now is a is a key that's in a chest and that key is gonna it's just one key and the key can be on either side now so here's where we came in this is like one side this is like a side of there's like barracks here and then over here there's another like set of barracks and the key that we're looking for is in one of one is on one side of the other and there's a whole bunch of rooms you can see it's in one of these rooms but there's a chest it's in a chest so you can walk up to the doors and if you're lucky, you can, you'll be able to like, see the, the text of that chest, and not have to open it. Because the problem with just opening the rooms is that your silver flame that you don't want to kill are are in one of these rooms. I believe that's it's a random room that they're in. So I'm not picking it up here. All right, let's see if it's on the other side. I think that'll be open now. Actually, a lot of this trash can just what will just white dot out. So you can just like I could have just kited him, and I think he would have just white dotted. Now back there is just like it, there's a pit that you can fall in later, and you'll fall in like at the back of this hall, and this is where you'd come out. There's a shrine back there too that you access from above. Famine Reaper. And I have no spell absorption left. I'm just going to run through here, see how many of those guys follow me. I do not have endless turning yet, so I gotta guard the number of turns that I have. That's another place that you can fall down from above, and, and that's where you come out. There's a chest there. Hopefully this is our thing. No silver flame in here. Don't just walk, run into a room and start nuking stuff. Because you start killing those silver flame, you're going to fail. You really got to pay attention. Okay, there's my key. So now I don't have to do any of these other rooms. Got my key. But ignore the well, no I'm not. I hate eternal wizards. Especially on Reaper 8 <laughs> when they're champions. that key is going to open up this room here.
This is kind of a cool room. Once you kill brimstone here. I should probably grab some footage of all the ghosts flying out for one of my trailers one of these days. stupid eternal wizard who ran by earlier. So you kill him and then a bunch of ghosts that are trapped. Fly away. Be free. Okay, now there is an objective. Now that we've done that, there's an objective on each side. That, uh, let's see. Yeah, it's over here. It's been a while. So you step here, and the dude's like, step closer, I'll allow you to proceed. So then you just you know, step up to the barrier, and then you zone. And then I zoned, so look, 863 hit points. Turn it off, turn it back on. Maybe it... Oh, okay, so zoning through that didn't make it turn off, the effect turn off. So maybe it's just like when you enter a quest. Okay, in any event, here's one of the tricky parts. So... You got all those, there's some silver flame dudes up there that you don't want to kill, but you do want to kill Maldetto's visage or whatever. So what you can do is, like, if you've got a good sneak, which I don't, but if you did, See, it shows you how often I use this. It's under feats. Move silently helps your sneak. So you can just like inch up here, and he's gonna see you before the silver flame. So if you do it right, like as soon as you see like text coming from Maldetto, then you just immediately start backing up. Hmm, this might have changed with the sneak mechanics, stealth mechanics, because I, I don't ever remember having to get that close to him, but in any event, you don't want to kill these silver flame warriors, you want to be really, really careful. Take care of that soul of cruelty. If you don't kill any silver flame, then that's what gives you the extra chest at the end. So I'm just gonna single target Maldetto with my dots. Just very surgically. And you can just kite everything else. The silver flame will go inactive once you kill Maldetto. They're like under his his power. It can be kind of a pain in the butt to target him amongst all the mobs, but just manually do it if you need to.
it's expensive on the old mana. So destroy Maldetto's projection, one left. But they got the Silver Flame, had taken some damage, and I think one died. That sucks. Because I thought there were four of them. Well, you can head out of here. If you got D-Door, you know, you can D-Door out. So D-Door is definitely has time savings in here. talk to my girlfriend see what she has to say and we'll do so I'll get right on it very well Nothing spawned that time, interesting. I don't I don't have no idea if there are certain mechanics to um avoid the spawns or what. Okay, so is it here? said it's been a while Carney Draper You know, I think I'm just going to let those guys create a barrier between me and that Carnage Reaper. That's fine by me. On the Cleric, I've been using Command and Sound Burst. Against the Reapers. Must have been a colors of the queen proc or something. So here's our other barrier. The other Maldetto projection with more silver flame dudes. that you could sneak up on. Maybe there were only three. Oh, no, there was four here. And so, yeah, I think there were four on the other side. Oh, and a Fear Reaper, of course. That's awesome. like the 
freaking worst place for a reaper. Okay, the fear reaper is dead. And ginger spice is not dead. Yet. Where's our Maldetto at? careful about using like ray spells you want to make sure he's the only thing that's going to get hit by it you know if you're trying to not kill the silver flame Soul needed that. You know, it would be nice if after you release the Silver Flame Warriors from his grip, if they were like, oh, thank you, by the way. But no, it's a thankless job being an adventurer. We are ready to go up top. I think. So the door's open now. This is a funny trap. Make sure you have freedom of movement. If it's not disabled. So you got grease on the ramp and a bunch of spinny blades that you makes you slide into. Classic D and D right there. So this right here is the end fight the pit that you fall down into. But to open that up, there are three objectives. Here. There's a pit that's going to fall down, try to get that chest, or it's, it's the floor is going to break away. And that's one of the places where you're going to, where I showed you those halls that I said you'd fall down into. Like those halls where, where you'd come out, it's from those kinds of pits. Okay, so... Here's our one objective, one out of three. There's three areas that look basically like this. There's gonna be like catwalks. You can fall through those, uh, the, the green stuff. Um, the ghosts won't, but you will. So here you gotta be quick if you're soloing. So I'm gonna hit my rallying cry. Oh crap. I should have killed these guys.
you know, pull this lever, and then pull this other lever. You only have a few seconds to pull them both. You know, if you obviously have more than one person, you just have one person on each. But that opens up this over here, and then there's going to be a like a named Skelly that we got to fight. What? Um, I didn't think that closed back up. This could be a problem without jump. I had jump, I could just jump over there. See if I can grab onto the ledge, yep. Oh, that is heartbreaking. Need to be a little bit quicker. Problems I don't normally have. Oh, wait a minute. Oh my god. Friel, did he come out of there? The lever opens it. See, I told you it's been a while. I can't remember these things. But yeah, if he had, if I had a better jump, which I don't on this cleric, you know, if he had abundant step or wings or whatever, that would be a lot easier to solo this part. But even a slow cleric can do it. A slow cleric without any jump. And I, I didn't even have my uh, rallying cry going when I did it, so that would have helped. Haste boost, etc. Purify the altar. And this is, you could see, just over the main room when you first came in, the doors that led up to the upper part. I need to figure out where that shrine is. My girlfriend's ready to talk to me, so that's good. But I need the shrine because I have no turns. Alright, see if I can remember my way around down here. The next objective is over here. Is there a shrine down there? The shrine down one of these. Carnage Reaper. Traps hit very hard on R1. Somehow I missed him. Uh, 
happen if you had good jump, you know, or I mean, well, you saw me just grabbing the ledge, so you could just do that. Avoid the traps. And now we're over, right there is where the, where we fought one of Maldetto's projections. Actually, that's where he was spawning, and the silver flame were there, the thankless silver flame. Who apparently feel entitled to be rescued by us. I mean, I'm a follower of Verladra. Which, I have to say, I'm not very happy with this luck of Verladra clicky. Uh, it's so slow that so many times I have found myself, you know, I get really low and I hit it and it's just like I'm dead before it goes into effect because it's just cosmically slow. It, even when Quicken doesn't do anything to it, so it's just, it, that really needs to be able to be quickened or just needs to be faster. So that, that is very disappointing. And the fact that yeah, I talked about last video, how it's only on self, even though the description says self or, or ally, but then, you know, at the top it just says self, and it's only, you can't, you can only target yourself. And the fact that it's not a full heal. You know, as I discovered when I had a Plague Reaper on me, you know, it, it'd be understandable if it didn't heal me all the way up, if it just said, you know, you heal a thousand hit points or something, but it says you heal to full. It doesn't specify a specific number of hit points. So if you heal the full, then you should heal the full. And if you fall, you just go back around. No big deal. Although I don't have a hell of a lot of time left, do I? But I really just have to do one more of these objectives. And then... Good to go. Good to go to the end fight. So the other one of these objectives is on the other side. Two on this side, one on the other. Let's open up the map so you can help get your bearings. So here's where we came in. Here's that room where there's, you know, endless respawn undead. There's the door that opened after we did the two sides where we had to go through the blue barrier and kill Modetto's projections, which are, which is right there on the lower part and right here on the lower part. Um, and I just did the upper parts of both of those as well. And then these are the barracks with all the rooms where we were looking for the chests with the, uh, the key. And the key opened up that place where we fought the name Skelly. And, you know, after we killed them, all the ghosts came out. That was that room right here. And then there were like skeletons here and I think like here maybe somewhere around here where we had to that's what opened up like the barracks areas. I'm going to see, I don't know if there's a shrine over here, but I'm going to go ahead and go over here and show it for the video. Make sure we have true seeing going. Because I think one of the shrines is behind a secret door. Pandemonium. Yay, here's my shrine. I could have just gone down the hall and not having to done, gone through the pit to get the shrine. These are the things I can't remember. But we're relearning it. And in any event, this video is going to be good enough for somebody who really doesn't know this quest to be able to watch it and, and have a better understanding, a, a good enough understanding to do it on their own, and that's really the objective here. Because clearly speed is not the objective. 
All right, I got 21 turns. Throw some undead at me. On the other side, I'm gonna go down that this hall. On the other, oh. That's weird. I got I lost my bearings. I thought I was on the other side. Hmm. Totally lost my bearings. I don't have a lot of time left, so I'm just gonna try to go do that other objective. We already came up here. It's just coming from the other side. Let's see. Okay, I guess I did the other side. I thought I went up this way, but Carnage Reaper. Pit here. Oh, crap. Oh, I don't have time for this. Sixteen minutes. I said just one more objective with the green fog and the catwalks, and then I can go to the end fight. If you have some jump, you can jump up right here. I may not have that. I just have to go down and back around.
if you do go into the room here with the silver flame and they're chasing you all around detouring back to the star is a good way to lose them otherwise you'll just want to run out and I think they won't go past this point I think they'll wipe that out and turn our board to you and just turn around but just keep running and you know, watch the AOEs Okay, our end fight should be open. This is going to be another surgical fight. Uh, yeah, sure, why not? I'll go ahead and try. And. So another surgical fight where Maldetto is going to be amongst a bunch of dudes you don't want to kill, some wolves, whatever. I can't remember all what's down there. I'm just going to dot them up and uh, just jump around like a jackass to avoid dealing with everything else. Now, there is... Oh, I'm also using Seek Eternal Rest, of course. Now, there is um, a corner that you can sort of fall down into. Let's see if I can figure out. I don't remember which one it is. And you can, like, avoid aggroing everything. I think it's... Yeah, so there are the dudes that we don't want to kill. I think if you go into sneak mode and just sort of fall back here... Sometimes it won't aggro everything. That's too far to hit him with a spell. I'm going to hit Maldetto though with a Petrifying Runestone. And even though that won't hurt him, it will grab his aggro, but it aggroed the Silver Flame. So. Like I said, I'm just going to run around waiting for a Maldetto to to reappear and then I'm gonna hit him with my coal, with my dots with my light dots or you know whatever dots you got or whatever you, you have whatever method you have to surgically hit something if you have to melee that's fine just get right out next to him and make sure that you know you're just hitting him Double stacked right now with my with my divine punishment dot. I'm gonna turn off auto targeting because if he disappears right when I go to throw that, it could hit another mob that I don't want to hit. That's a little trick you can do in quests like let sleeping dust lie and stuff, where you where you're you know you need to be surgical about your strikes and you don't want you know, your attacks to automatically. Fly, you know, switch over to the next available target if your target, for whatever reason, becomes uh, a no longer a valid target. Which can happen all the time. Like, if you're doing Let Sleeping Dust Lie and you have multiple insta-killers in there, so if you both go to, like, insta-kill the same mob, one of you is going to land it, and the next one is going to auto-target the next available mob. And if that's a spider, well, then you just killed a spider. And then that sucks. And he's almost dead. So like I said, you know, here I am. I'm soloing it. R1 on a freaking cleric. Um, you can do it, you know, you can do it at level 13 to get bravery bonus if you're not reapering. And we're going to come up here and click the altar. Woo, 40,000 XP. That's why I feel like to have openers for it, because it's pretty good XP. This used to be one people would, back in the day when there wasn't as much XP available, people would would run this, you know, on all the difficulties and farm it out. Uh, you can upgrade your silver flame thingy dingies. And your emerald claw nuggets here, up to tier 3. But you can do you can do all the, the first three tiers. So like in the, in the bloody crypt, you could do tier 1 only. In the shadow crypt, you can do tier 1 and tier 2. In the Curse Crypt, you can tier, do Tier 1, 2, and 3. And in the Abbot Raid, you can do all four tiers right there at the altar at the end of the Abbot. But you can only upgrade it once, one tier per run. 
So if you wanted to get something that was a base item all the way up to tier 3 using this altar, for example, you would need to run Curse Crypt three times. Or add it four times. Okay. Let's see if we get our extra chest. See, this extra chest is what's available if you don't kill any of the dudes. Let's see what happens. You have rescued the flame from Altado's grass and managed to save us all. You are truly worthy of the title of hero. Awesome! I got the bonus chest. Get anything? Let's go ahead and re-roll it, just for fun. Okay? Nothing. Nothing. And nothing. See, I don't even know if this is the... I may have just wasted 21 shards. This may not be where the, the named loot drops. Let's see what let's see what Wiki says. Well, I just looked up every single item that drops in here, and it just says end chest for each specific item. So I think I just wasted 21 shards. <laughs> well, thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful. If you did not understand how the curse crypt works, if you have any questions about my videos, you can respond on YouTube.